We're welcome here. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. In the back. Yeah. You can hear me back there, John. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so I'm very happy to, to be here and uh, the first uh, talk deals with the existence theorem, the Holberg code theorem, and the constraint search generalization. Of course, at the beginning in the 1920s, you had the Schrodinger equation, and uh, the ground state energy is, of course, obtained by this uh, minimization here, where H is the Hamiltonian, and the minimum over psi, psi, H, psi, where psi is anti-symmetric and normalized to unity. Of course, this is a very cumbersome problem for uh, n electrons if n gets large. And uh, as a result, it was recognized by Thomas and Fer Fermi in the 1920s that it would be worthwhile to work directly with the density instead of the many body weight function. And, uh, oh, thank you. Uh, I'm in the middle of the lecture, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it, uh, <laughs> uh, he's, he's a interesting guy. <laughs> so it would be worth uh, while to work with the density directly, which is only three dimensional, regardless of <laughs> anybody else worried about that? <laughs> it's uh, uh, three three dimensional rather than the three n dimensional wave function where the density is defined to integrate over all space space spin coordinates. Here is the space spin coordinate, D3R is I is space, DS is spin of all electrons except one. And uh, for the electron number one, it's just the spin. And you end up with the density uh, as a function, it, it, you have R, R1 here. And then eventually we, we, we don't use the one uh, label, we just say R here. And uh, the biggest reason it was recognized by Thomas and Fermi that one should play with the electron density, try to get a functional of the electron density used, rather than the many body wave function, was the fact that if you take the expectation value of just V, the external potential, or most often the electron nuclear attraction potential of psi and this sum here psi, because psi is anti-symmetric, uh, you could take it as N, it can be anti-symmetric or symmetric, to have N times psi with just V of R1. Of course, we use anti-symmetric wave functions. We have fermions. And uh, so we take this integral here. And because of this definition of the density, this is just the integral of VR1, NR1, and D3R1. So V, this integral here involving V, the uh, external potential, is the largest part of the energy. So we get that in terms of the density. Therefore, the question was asked by Thomas and Fermi in the 1920s. Well, the question is, is there a functional that you can tack onto here with the V so that the minimum is the ground state? So in the 1920s, Thomas and Fermi came out with a functional which was exact for the non-interacting part of the kinetic energy of the density you're using is homogeneous. And they had a classical approximation to the electron-electron repulsion energy. That was a Thomas Fermi approximation for what is beyond what is known here. That's what we had in the 1920s. 
that from the 1920s to the mid-1960s, people were fooling around with this part here. But they never asked the question, what is the exact F? What is the exact functional that one would use for this part? I put down FHK here because that's what happened in 64. But you had a functional which was the original Thomas Fermi and modifications of it. And they never asked the question. Of course, Cohen won the Nobel Prize for this. And he got the Nobel Prize because he was involved with Hohenberg in asking the simple question, what was, what is the functional that Thomas and Fermi is trying to approximate? And what they came out with is that it's this expectation value here, and uh, they get this from the original Holmberg Cone theorem. And I'm going to show a generalization of it, the constraint search generalization that I put down in 1979. So through the Holmberg Cone theorem, this is the theorem that took place here in 1964. There is a functional, which we'll call FHKN, which was added to this integral here that will give you upon energy density optimization or energy minimization the exact ground state energy. And what is FHKN? It's this expectation value, psi NHK, psi NHK where psi NHK is restricted to be the non-degenerate ground state of some H prime. So we have an H here, but when we do the optimization here, or the minimization by optimizing N, we are searching over all Ns, and what this for each Fn here, it looks at the Hamiltonian that psi is a ground state of. And Homer Cohn proved that although there are infinite number of psi's that gives a wave, wave function, there is only one ground state of some Hamiltonian that gives and so that n is unique h psi n h k is uniquely defined. So it exists and therefore the functional exists. But the the n had to be non-interacting be representable. In other words, it had to belong to some Hamiltonian with a non-degenerate ground state. Not necessarily the one you're interested in, but some to be used in this uh, minimization process here. But again, the big advance was asking the question, is there a functional that you could define in terms of wave functions and once you ask, is there a functional that could you could define in terms of wave function, then you could use the variational principle, as I'm putting up, the constraint search version, for instance, that will give it to you. So the big thing was the question. They asked the question. There are an infinite number of wave functions that yields a density. And here we're specifying how to get a function of which you have one for each end here. Okay, are there any questions? You can interrupt me at any time. So that was the original Holmberg Cohen uh, theorem. So now I'm going to put down the, uh, write down the uh, constrained search generalization of Holmberg Cohen.
that it's uh, 1979. Okay. So, actually, I have a question. What? Um, so, why does that have to be non interactive? It has to be because I wrote it wrong. Uh, non degenerate. I'm sorry. Non -degenerate. Thank you very much. I, uh, non degenerate. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. So, in other words, I said psi and HK is non degenerate bound state of some age. I know that means that N have to be non degenerate being representable. Does it all make sense now? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, please interrupt. Uh, so, what I'm going to present now is a generalization that generalizes the functional to all n and rather than use a proof by con contradiction that H. Holmberg Kerr originally used, it is, I think, a proof that once a student is, is told there is an f in terms of wave functions, I think it's something that a student would proof that the student would naturally come out with. And, and uh, so it, it's a very simple proof. And uh, I'll put it on the board. So it requires an inner and outer minimization. So it's uh, it's really it, it, uh, so it's a generalization to to include degeneracies and non v representability So what what is done is one looks at this and uh, realizes that we can write the uh, e ground state is equal to the min over n. And rather than min over psi, we break it down to two minimizations. Min over n and a min over psi yield n. So min over psi yield n and min over n here. And then this is psi, and then the sum of i d r i plus just uh, you attach it here, right? Okay, uh, plus plus T plus B E E psi. Okay. So we break it down that way. Yeah. Okay. Any question about this? So rather than the minimization searching over the side, we divide into two steps. We pick an N, and then we search over all psi yields N, and then we search over all N in the minimization. So you make the single minimization into a double minimization. Ah, but what happens is that all sides that yield n have the same expectation value here. So we have E ground state is equal to the n over n. And then it goes this, uh, V of R, N of R, D3R, okay. plus the min of psi yield N, which is taking this and taking it inside. 
uh, psi t plus p e psi here, psi here, and going like that. Okay, any question? This is. Can you say again why why could you separate it? Okay, because all size inside here, all right? So we wrote this out, right? You see this? This is this part here. It's a, I removed the one. It doesn't matter. One, it, it, it's a dummy variable, right? R1. So I moved the one here. We use a lot of dummy variables here. I got a dummy, but the... <laughs> well, I, may, I may be. Okay. But there are a lot of dummy variables. Okay. Maybe I am. Okay. So, uh, so, okay, so good question. This is extremely important, right? Okay, so uh, you ask, so you see this part here, correct? But this part here is this, you see? So all sides that yield the same n have the same value for this part, and that's this. Okay? So that one has to put the rest of the manipulation in this part here. Good? Okay. Everyone? Yes. yes. I noticed in the first uh, definition of uh, ground space energy, you yeah. considered on the external uh, potential for one R, and then you. Uh, here? The, the, the upper, upper one. You mean this, this? Yeah, yeah you wrote a VR1. Where? I wrote what? Just in the uh, summation. I wrote one is an I. It's an I. Okay. And okay. Then, okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure you're paying attention. That's why I agree with you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Good. Any other questions? This is very important. This is more important than anything else, any of the other <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. We have this. This is extremely important. Okay. So, then, of course, uh, So then what we're going to say is that, uh, so it's going to be now E ground state is min over N, and then we're going to go integral V of R, N of R, P3R, plus F of N. So we'll call the more general one f of n. All right, more general one. Okay. okay. And uh, where f of n is equal to, and I'll just call it psi n now t plus v e. Psi n equal to the min of psi yields n psi t plus v e e psi. Okay. Okay. So psi n. Psi of n is the minimizing wave function, meaning it's the for given n, psi n is the wave function that yields n and minimizes this. There are infinite number of wave functions uh, shown by John Harriman that could yield a given weight density, an infinite number of wave functions that yield a density. And Psi n is the one that gives this minimization for an arbitrary density. Any questions? Do you say the many particle wave function or No, these are many particles. Okay. 
And if N is a ground state of the particular Hamiltonian you're interested in, then uh, psi N is the ground state wave function. So that's the last part we write here. Is that of course E ground state okay, is equal to the integral V of R and ground state R D three R plus F and ground state. And use ground state. So, what we have, as you see, is a general definition for this Fn that generalizes the Hohenberg Cohen. Yeah. Now, yes? So, you said that there would be a infinite number of wave functions that would be the same density. The, correct. So, how do you define that the unique uh, wave function for the, that minimizes that? Okay, so the question asks if there is an infinite number of wave functions that yield the density, how do you find the, the wave function that does this minimization? Okay, it's a very good question. Uh, we don't actually do this. This is a theoretical construct, okay? And that is an important question because it leads to the next point. I started with Hohenberg Cohen, okay, and put down here, F, this minimization here. Not only does F establish this establish the existence of a function of the density, it gives instructions for its approximations. When we approximate the functional, we don't do this. We don't find this side. What we do is use this definition as a set of instructions. See? And what will be given by myself and others later is to show how you get constraints on the functional by knowing this. For instance, the function use PBE, right? scan or blip, whatever, lot of them are created by looking at this, deriving constraints. You don't find psi, but this this definition, you you try to mimic this in the function. For instance, when you have like an integral of exchange, the integral of the density of the four thirds, that involves a wave function in you know, you get that from a, looking at a wave function. Does that answer the question? However, there are people like De La Sitte in uh, Germany that do try to do this minimization to make that interesting results. But your question is a very important one. You don't carry this out in general. This tells you how to derive the constraints to, and we'll get into that later, of how to approximate that. You see? You want to approximate that. Originally, Thomas and Fermi, you had the kinetic part as the integral to the four-thirds. There it is. Okay, thank you. Uh, the integral of five-thirds to the kinetic. It's a the uniform gas for the kinetic, non-interacting kinetic energy. But, uh, okay, does that answer it? You don't do this. You derive theorems from this, and we'll show how this goes. Yes? Just to see it together, could you write out the more explicitly? Can I write out what? The explicitly. Oh, yeah. Oh, you mean the operators? Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is good. Uh, sure. So to make sure I... Okay, so let me write out both. Okay? T is the kinetic energy. So it's sum of i equal 1 to n minus 1 half del 
square root of pi. Okay, is that fine? All right. And the VEE operator, it's a, a good point that you asked me to put down because you have to do this, you need to know this, right? And you have to put this, it all helps in the derivation of the theorem. Yes, we have to know what the operators are. And VEE is equal to the sum of I equal 1 to N, sum of J equal 1 to N, N is the number of electrons, and what we have is a half, and I not equal to J. Okay? And it's 1 over Ri minus Rj, and this is a vector. Vector. But I won't put that is that okay in atomic units? We're all set? Yes? This is very familiar. This is what you normally see. Okay. Well, yes? Okay. Am I right? I put the half in and I not equal to J. Okay. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> all right, anything else? Yes? Can I ask how degenerates is important? Because I don't see it clearly. So if the ground state is degenerate. And it should apply the, the last question for the energy should be here. Yes, yes. Well, if it's degenerate, you can get you can get let's go through all the steps, okay? Uh, if try to see where degeneracy could destroy any of the steps. Okay, so Let's assume I pick one of the one of the degenerate ends, all right? So then I'm going to get that. Let's assume I pick n happens to be a ground state, one of them. Then psi then will turn out to be that particular wave function belongs to that particular n. Then let's just say I pick another n that belongs to the degenerate set. Then you'll get a different psi. But you'll get the, the energy, the total energy will be the same. Yeah. It doesn't affect. Yes? So the reason I wanted you to write them out sure. is because um, that we, my intuition is that we are free at this point from having to conceptualize separate wave functions for the electrons. One electron, there's no one electron wave function. But the R, is R I and R J? There's no, um, there's no, there's no explicit position for each electron. They each have wave functions. So each R, we have an I for every electron, and an I for every like position. Um, your grid is solved with no grid. So the R I minus R J. How is that a vector? R is it is a, is a function for each electron? No, it's a position. It's a position. It's a position. It's a, it's a no, point in space. R is so. so but the, the, each electron doesn't have a particular position. That it's just about. Well, it's a position at a given moment. I mean, it just uh, it just so when you when you take the uh, expect when you take the integral, you're you're looking at a value of a wave function. Okay, and you're going integrating over different parts in space. So when you're integrating over different parts in space, R I and R J are going to change. These are the positions as you're taking the multi-dimensional integral. So that's where it comes in. And then you're looking at the value of the wave functions for the difference I and R I and R J. Okay, another question. Okay, so we have, so these are very all very good questions, and you'll see in later lectures both uh, approximations perhaps that come about uh, using this definition of F. with the original definition of Holmberg Combs. But the point thing is the definition and the existence theorem give the instructions for the approximation of the function. 
and that's that's extremely extremely important. Okay. All right. So that that is the first part. How much time do we have? So we have about ten more minutes. Twelve more minutes. Okay. Good. All right. So that's uh, very good. All right. Now, you know, if one looks at the original home Burke home approach the way they do it. The first thing they'll point out is that if you're given an end ground state, that it determines all the properties of the system. And then they derive the variational uh, part of it. So uh, this is all, of course, what I'm given is the variational uh, part of the theory. So let's, let's now. Let's now, I could leave this off here, and let's now, oh, is that too far to the left? Over here? Could everyone see here? Right to the right. Right over here. Over here. You can see? It's good for this side. <laughs> <laughs> Should I erase that? Let me erase that. I, could, I think I can erase this at this point. Okay. Let me erase this. Let me erase uh, okay, so now let's, uh, is it 10 minutes to 45 or 10 minutes to the out? 10 minutes to 45. Oh, I can race slow. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. We're in really good shape. And I really enjoyed the questions. So, uh, Okay, so, sorry, I couldn't enjoy the question so much, I have. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, so, over here, I mean, so the basic way that I have introduced to it is that there's a one to, a unique one to one mapping in a, a non-degenerate um, case between the external potential, the gravity density, and the void function, right? Well, I'll tell you what, let's get to that now. Okay, great. Yeah. And then, then that, that's the question. So, so, okay, so we'll say that in ground state, this we're going to get to this map. Okay, this will get to the map. So, in ground state determines, it's just to show, which determines, and I put all the quotes, properties. This is the mapping. Okay, all the properties of this system. New Gramsci determines all the properties of this system. Uh, there are two proofs. I uh, proof A, I go through proof A and proof B, but uh, at least I'll get to proof A. Alright, so first let's do. So what am I talking about? I say you give me give an end ground state, then that end ground state will give you the Hamiltonian and then will give you once you get the Hamiltonian, you solve the Schrodinger equation in principle and get all the properties. And this is the one to one. Okay. So this is separate from this in a way because you don't have to do this to, to you know, utilize all this. But this is very interesting in itself and important in itself. And Homer Cohen originally went this way and then this way, but we're going this way and this way. So what do you mean? How do I? What do we mean by terms of power? It means it uniquely gives you the Hamiltonian, a given. And cannot and ground state cannot belong to more than one Hamiltonian. So it gives the Hamiltonian. Then once you give the Hamiltonian, then you solve H psi or E psi in principle, and then you get the properties. You get excited states as well as ground states. So let's let you see this. Okay. So how does it turn the whole property? Well, first of all, so you have to get the Hamiltonian. So you get you take n ground state R d3r, and that gives you what? This integral gives you n, 
right? Correct? The number of electrons is the integration of density over all space. Now, N, the person who asked to put down T and B, she knew what was important here. What does N give you? Once you have N, you have T and B, E, E. So this gives you T and B, E, E, opposite. Right. So all now the next thing is you you need to know in the Hamiltonian the sum of the BRI and next so we say next psi ground state what we've done here is identify as the weight function as the weight function that yields in ground state and minimizes and minimizes what? If I give you in ground state, so in principle how do you get side ground state? Minimizes what? Only the kinetic plus electron repulsion, right? I mean, so there's V is, but we don't know what V is yet, right? The, the uh, external potential. Bit. So you, you're correct, but it minimizes, and we'll write it this way, the expectation value is equal to That's it. So, so we can get, now we've got T and V just from getting N, and psi ground state is identified as a wave function. Okay, so then, now, if you move, remember we had before uh, that you have, remember from, from here, you have T plus V E plus the sum of V R I psi ground state equal V ground state psi ground state. Okay, we have that. But we now have to get this. So we have now V R I minus E and we divide by divide by psi ground. Okay, so then what you get is that the sum of pi equal 1 to n, v r i minus e ground state, see, right? You divide, and this is a multiplicative operator. We don't know what it is yet, but we're going to find it. We have this, okay. So this is, uh, let me write it more neatly. V minus E ground state is equal to, so we bring this on this side, it's minus T psi ground state divided by psi ground state, and then minus V E E. So we found this, we found this, we know so I got so we know everything on the right hand side, and therefore, okay, uh, so therefore by this relation the sum of V R I I equal one to N is determined within an additive constant.
Yeah. Look, they added a constant in this. What you're getting is B minus E. But that, so when I say all the properties, what I meant is that D, we get T, V, E, but T within the uh, added constant. But the added constant is of no factor when you do excitation energies, which is a difference from here. So, uh, but you could get now E ground state if you make an assumption that VRI something about it, for instance, that VRI vanishes at I infinity. Yes. Yeah. yes. So, the, so if we're, taking, we're looking for the side that minimizes the energy, uh, of the, then that means that the ground state density does not include the energy? That means the ground state energy density does not what? Does not include determinant energy? No, well, ah, it determines the energy within, I could get a little humorous here, within an arbitrary additive constant, meaning that, you see, yes. if you take, if you, if the point is, you could take a constant and add it to this, okay? Yes, that's not and then saying. this constant add it to this. Well, what happens is, if you specify something about the potential then you have it. For instance, we could say the potential vanishes at infinity, and I'll get it to you. Yes. Okay, I, yes. I, that, that's not my question. Sure, I sure. this constant thing is also uh, the, the case when, we, when we're using psi uh, rather than the, the density to, to determine energy. But we, we just said psi GS is identified as a wave function that yields NGS and minimizes the energy. Minimizes T plus V E. Okay, so the energy due to, uh, well, the external potential is like, that's set, that's, that's given. That's because all wave functions that yield a given density has the same integral with respect to the external potential. Yes. So the minimization only involves this, yes. yes. But not all wave functions that have the same, that give the same density, give the same energy. Not, well, that, that no, not that's correct, density. meaning that you have an infinite number of size that yield a given density, and we may have only, most of the time, only one minimizing one, okay? Okay, so wait, wait. It's one minute. Okay, so one, one hour. Uh, you said one minute, one minute one to minute. go, which so, is so a whole hour. Two to the 45 minutes. Oh, well, that's good, okay. So let me let me wait. Let me then just well first you said that forty five minutes then quite discussion. Yes. We've been having discussion for forty five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this is also a law school. It's, it's, it's an hour of my lecture discussion. Yeah, right. But but can I just finish the sure. last thing here? Okay. So let me you had a question. Yeah, I just it's more of when you divide it by side ground state. Right. You cancel it on the potential side, but Well, wait, V gets canceled out, but this, this, this is, no, you can't, this involves derivatives, and you can't cancel it. Okay, so now, now let's get to the last thing is further, okay, say, so now, as with Coulomb potentials, they vanish infinity, infinity, uh, we go further, we would say, if we know, that V R goes to infinity equals zero, okay, then we could get E ground state, right? Because what we then do is we take all the different in V E You'll take all the different RIs, the different parts of infinity, okay? So making this vanish, okay, this we say goes to zero at infinity there, and therefore we would get the E ground state, that E ground state is equal to the limit of all Ri goes to infinity of T psi ground state over psi ground state. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, sorry. Yes. So, 
Sorry, uh, is it possible that there are two or more side GS that give you the same NGS? Yes. In that case, I mean, what? I mean, in the T side GS by side GS case, you get two different values for the two different side GS. Well, if, if, so you get two different sides here. Yes. See, but you get the same D, you see? You can get two different sides given the same in ground state, but the value is going to be the same if it's a degeneracy. That can happen. Yes. Okay. Now, the person who asked about the one-to-one, -one, that's what I'm generating here. Is it correct? And I tell you, in fact, how you do it. Right? This gives to one to one, it, it says that the density gives you the external potential B without a kind. This is it. So you very often see this double arrow, right? And it goes, you have uh, the one to one between the side. You know, and it, it, for non-degeneracy, non you see side ground state, end ground state, whatever. And then there's the, the double arrow V, V and N, V. No. The arrow goes V and end ground state. That's the, a V could only belong to one ground state. A V can, that's the one-to-one -one we see. V can only belong to one ground state. Yes! It can only belong to one ground state density. A B can belong to only one ground state density. And we showed how we like the B. You see, we're only getting one V. We're not getting more than one V. So this is N ground state determines V. So we write it right this way. N ground state determines V. So the arrow is, let me let me do the arrow right here. Uh, the arrow, point arrow is this one. You can have V giving more than one end ground state when you have a degeneracy. But given end ground state, it determines V uniquely. That's, that's what you pointed out before, correct? Okay, sure. Any other questions with respect to this? Okay, so now we're open to a general discussion or a yes. discussion for general. Yes, yeah, now we have some time for the specific discussion. Okay. Also. All right. So, so are there more, more questions? Points. Uh, yes, one here. Uh, I'd like to ask you about the definition that you gave us. Is it obvious uh, that the definition of the innovation uh, is brilliant to the solution of many body during your question? Okay. Start again. You pointed over here yeah, to where? This is double minimization. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, is it obvious that this definition equivalent to uh, to the solution of many body Schrodinger equation? How are you sure that this will provide the same answer? If I you, so, what you're approach? saying, what you're saying is, am I sure? Let's do this. Am I sure that E ground state, this, is the same as E ground state, and there's no one, no doubt this? Okay. And your question is, am I certain that, I think this is your question, am I certain that this is equivalent to this? Is that the question? No, well, if it's equivalent to the solution of the equation. Yes, it's the same. Yes. Oh, it's the same. Because, well, look at it this way. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't, I mean, your... I think I, Do you see it? I mean, yes. you're, 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 you pick an N, and then you find all the side that yields the N, okay? Okay. Uh, in one of the text of Pauliang book, they actually said, how do you get 
how will you find the pick that book to talk to you put it should be shortest we'll go for a minute let's say you want the shortest person in the school the shortest student so first first you find the within each different classroom you find the shortest person okay and that from all the different classrooms the all the shortest people go out in the yard and then in the yard you find the person that's shortest in the yard okay so uh, you could do this but put, put, put out best looking either way okay so shortest in the yard let's say so so you see but you see this yeah it, it, it's okay it's an important point yeah hi yeah. Yeah. you have to a short remark on this so it, that situation it could happen that you're prescribing a density but then you find no wave function that actually gives it so in principle one would have proof in addition that for a given density one can always find the wave function that gives it but that's easy to do actually well, well okay yeah, but, but in principle to make no well, 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 maybe function. that's the point you're making is that the point of the can you find okay but okay this is this is then let's let me just say this but let, let's look at so when you're looking at this okay so i say that's a minimization okay elliot lee proved that the minimum exists but you could always write this as an infima right meaning the energy exists even though there's no minimizing wave function for instance let's say you're doing an atomic problem helium and you lower the nuclear charge so that it's very very small okay you'll find and you solve for the lowest <coughs> energy there the ground state you can always find an energy but there's no wave function the, elect the second electron jet drifts off okay so but so you could the the f exists if you always write this as an ephemer Okay, but it, it still exists anyway, even if you didn't know that there was a minimizing side. Maybe that's what you asked me. Is there a minimizing side? There is a minimizing side to improve. Okay. okay, maybe that's what it is, and Hardy helped with getting there. Yeah. Okay. Let's take one more question. Yeah. It's just what happens if this orientation are going to infinity, of course, to the differential tends to zero. But what about the Electron interaction potential. Okay, wait, wait, okay. That goes to zero. I said the difference. I said or R R the and we'll say let's we're going to make it goes to infinity and we're gonna say at different parts in space. So that basically saying if there's no potential for them together. Well, no, no, no. We're making them do this. You see, we we were allowed to play with the electrons in the the the. You know, we're saying say what we do. We have we have a wave function, and we say within the wave function, take one electron, put it far apart there. Right? Put one R R I here. Rj there, Rj, R1 here, R2 there, R3 there. See what I mean? We could put a, put one on Jupiter, one on Mars. You see, very far apart. We're allowed to do it. So you make all Ri goes to infinity in different places, right? And then V disappears. So we have this. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. All right. Um, that's one. Is there Please, a question? Yeah. If you have a short question, we take it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, given that the, we just said that a given ground state density does not map to a particular energy, it can map to many different energies depending on what psi you're using. The whoa, 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 wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Let's go slow. <laughs> Let's go slow. E easy. I, I, okay, now. By the way, what I said is recorded. Yeah. So we could. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay, I'm going to be a peach now. I can. Okay. 
Yeah. But in my previous question, I said, oh, I thought that given a given ground state density is going to map to a given ground state energy. And you said, no, there's different sizes. No, 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 no. Given functions okay, right. could map. Oh, okay. okay. You have a ground state density, yeah. right? Okay. So I, what I'm saying is that the downstate density gives the attractive potential of V. Or, okay. it, it gives it gives we, we have the T operator, the V operator, but what it gives is V, it it gives it with an arbitrary additive constant because yes. I don't so, have a problem with right, additive constant. Okay. Additive constant okay. is fine. Right. I'm saying to an additive, additive constant, let's apply every sentence we say to an additive constant. Okay. And the NGS, you're saying a given NGS yeah. maps to one V. But you're it correct. doesn't map to one E, one energy, because we just said, or in answer to my previous question. Well, it, it maps to one energy, energy if you specify something about V, like if it, it, it vanishes at infinity or you give it a value somewhere. Maybe we can talk about it. Yeah, talk about it. Let's move to the discussion to the coping range. Yeah, I mean, I, then I, I think it's clear if you like. Okay. So, thank you, Mel, very much for the first session.